And I got some cool stuff to talk about today. Got some really neat things, so I wanna jump right in. Spend about 10, 15 minutes just talking about how to hack your own mind. I keep getting that question all the time. How do you hack your own mind? I mean, first of all, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, something that I began to study back when I was 11 years old. I uh, became a master practitioner at 15. I think one of the original ways of being able to hack your mind is Neuro Linguistic Programming. You know, philosophy talked about how the mind works, psychology looks at how the mind works. I'm talking about getting in there and changing what's going on at the deeper level. It is possible. It's absolutely possible. You got to think about the most successful people on the planet and how they're able to break out of old patterns, old ways of looking at things and be able to achieve some of the most incredible things that you could possibly achieve. Whether it's on the physical level, I've gotten to work with professional athletes who break the barriers that they thought were previously there. Um, people who transcend the concepts of technology and learn how to connect people up. Like the guy who created this whole Facebook thing, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, you look, you look at that. Musk with the electric vehicle, you can't do it, there's no way. Steve Jobs with Apple. I mean, these people sat there and they went, I'm not gonna conform to these concepts or ideas that other people are putting out onto me. I'm not gonna conform with other ways of thinking. I'm not gonna let other people's limitations become my reality. I want you guys to think about that for a moment. The biggest thing that stops you from hacking your mind, something that I have studied now for over 35 years, the biggest thing that stops you from hacking your own mind is buying into the bull, I don't think you're allowed to say that next word on Facebook. It's buying into the crap that's out there where they tell you that you can't do this, you can't do that. It's not possible to do any of those things. Here's the deal, you guys. If one other person can do it, so can you. That's a concept in neuro-linguistic programming that is fundamental to the teachings. I, I think it transcends neuro-linguistic programming. I think a lot of people know this deep down inside that if one other person can do it, so can you. There is no difference between them and you. If they've been able to achieve something, so can you. I can find someone from almost every walk of life that is able to achieve incredible results. One of my clients, let me slow down for a minute, I'm real fired up today. <laughs> Aloha, Aditi, and Jasmine, so good to see you here too. And Argel, Argel's on here, of course Argel's on here. Hey look you guys, one of my clients, um, I, I, I didn't get permission to mention her name, she's an incredible woman, came from India, uh, was told basically by her dad that if you wanna have an incredible life, make sure that you meet the right man and get married. I mean, that, that's not bad, good, just his way of thinking, very old school. From India, if you want to have a good life, he says to his daughter, make sure you meet the right man. She's like, well, I want more than that. Moves here to the US, comes here to the US, an immigrant, English as a second language, and begins to work for a company. Has a degree, tech industry, and then says, you know what, I wanna quit. I want to quit this tech industry and I want to go do my own thing. Of course, what does everyone say to her? You can't do it. You're a woman. You're an immigrant. There's no way you're going to be successful. So she sets out on her own, opens up her own company, one person solo. That was a couple decades ago. She was just listed as in the, I think she's in the top 10 of a hundred most powerful women that are out there, game changers. And you know what something she said to me in a recent coaching call? It was pretty powerful. I'm translating it, I'm putting it into my own words. But here's what I basically heard from her. She's gotten up and talked in front of the United Nations. She gets up and she talks to immigrants all the time. And what I basically heard her say is that people that come from other countries and come here to the US have an easier time at being successful because they don't buy in to the limitations that a lot of people that were born here buy into or get caught up in all of the crap that's going on. They come here and they go, look at all of this opportunity here. I wanna live a happy, beautiful life. And they have that ability to do it. She gets up and she says, I think we got better chances. So many people move here and they think, oh, I can't make it here. She went in with a different mindset. She hacked her own mind and refused to buy in 
to everyone else's limitations. You guys got to get over the fact that other people have told you stuff. If anyone, if one person can become successful, you can totally become successful. Joy, so good to see you on here. By the way, for any of you that are in any groups that you want to get this message out there, share this. Put this out there and share this information as much as you can because I just want to give people hope that you can actually hack your own mind, not other people's minds. Hack your own mind. So here's the deal. Here's what I want you guys to think about. How do you begin to hack your mind? First of all, you need to begin to learn your own mind. So here's where I want to give you some really clear content. People get caught up in their patterns, right? I think it's Aristotle that said we are what we repeatedly do. So yeah, if you eat crappy food all the time, you're going to have a physical body that is not going to be in the best shape. If you eat great food, if you eat healthy food, you're going to have a physical body that's in good shape. You exercise, you're going to have a different physiological response. So we know at the deep level that we are what we repeatedly do. So we're patterns. As a doctor of psychology, I can tell you that there's been a lot of research that looks at our patterns becoming unconscious, how we continuously do the same thing over and over again. And pretty soon it kind of goes on autopilot rather than thinking about doing something, your unconscious mind kicks in and you just begin to do it. Like you wake up in the morning and you have your routine. At some point you had to establish that routine. So we're just a series of patterns that we run. Neuro-linguistic programming is sometimes referred to as a pattern interrupt. The guy who invented it, Richard Bandler, I studied with him when I was 15. Ooh, that was 32 years ago. I studied with him when I was 15 years old. He referred to NLP as a pattern interrupt because at the core of the teachings of neuro-linguistic programming, you're looking for this pattern that a person's running. Now, overall, if you're living your life and you're happy, like Lisa just said over here, if you're living your life and you're happy and you're running a pattern that creates happiness, that creates joy, then that's a good pattern. We're not talking about hacking those. We're talking about hacking the patterns that derail you guys. The patterns that pull you away from achieving what you really want to achieve. And over all of these years that I've been teaching, I think it boils down to one thing. We want to be happy. You want to be happy in your career. You want to be happy in your health and fitness, in your relationship. And yet we run these patterns that are the opposite of what we should be doing to achieve happiness in our life. I did. I went from being a varsity athlete in high school and I became obese. Even knowing all of these techniques, I have been face down on the path, wondering what the hell did I do in order to deserve being at this low point in my life. I've been there, you guys. doesn't matter if you learn this stuff at an early age, you got to practice these things. And I found myself running a pattern over and over again and that was eating unhealthy food and that was doing things that led to being unhealthy. And these patterns would just run. If, if this was live, right? well, I mean, it is live, but if you guys were sitting here in front of me, I'd look out at the room and go, how many of you eat something and as you're shoveling it in your mouth, you're sitting there going, I shouldn't eat this. And then you take the next bite or you deep down inside, no, I shouldn't be going into this job. I shouldn't be going into this career. I'm miserable. And yet you go in and you do it. You go and keep doing the same thing over and over again. So what I want to teach you guys today is called pattern recognition so that you can begin to hack your own mind before you can even get into hacking your mind. You got to be able to find what it is that you need to hack. So here's how pattern recognition works. You wake up one day and you look back at the previous year and you go, whew, last year, man, I was a real jerk. <laughs> and you sit there and you go, Oh, that could have been, I could, I could have been better. I could have done a better job. I could have been better, you know, whatever. Then one day you wake up and you're at the end of running a pattern. You're right at the tail end of running a pattern and you go, wow, I was just a real jerk. You still haven't really found the pattern yet, right? Then what happens is one day you wake up and you're right in the middle of running a pattern a pattern that you know you should get rid of and you wake up in the middle of it and you go, wow, I'm being a real jerk, but you keep doing it anyway. You keep eating the pie. You keep going into the job. At least now you're awake, you guys. Then one day you wake up and you go, I'm about to go down a path that I don't want to go down. 
I'm about to say something negative to my partner. I'm about to blow up at my kids. I'm about to eat some crappy food. We beat ourselves up in those moments. And I think actually you should celebrate those moments. I want you to stop and think about this for a moment. You should actually celebrate that moment, not because you're about to eat that whole pie like I used to, not because you're about to yell at your kids. You should celebrate it because you have awareness. You are farther ahead than most of the people that are out there because most people don't even have an awareness of the patterns that they run. They're aware of this finger and they're willing to point it at other people rather than take responsibility for themselves. Pattern awareness takes courage. Pattern awareness takes responsibility because you wake up and you sit there and you go, I am about to lose it and you do anyway. At least you should celebrate the fact that you notice it because the next morning you wake up and you sit there and you go, this is something that I do a lot. This is something that I do over and over again. This is something that I do in my job. This is something that I do with my health. Wait a minute. Maybe this is about me, right? All change begins with who? Or is it whom? I don't know. I'm a doctor of psychology, not English. All change has to begin with you. You got to start with you. And when you recognize your pattern and you understand that this is a pattern that I run and that I have been running this pattern, you be grateful for that. And then you ask yourself, now, how do I break this pattern, right? Now that you have awareness of the pattern, now that you are clear that you're running the pattern, the next thing you want to do is you want to break that pattern. So what does it take? Okay. If it's baggage, Next week, I'll talk about baggage. I'll talk about mental and emotional release. I'm going to do a webinar on Monday. For those of you that want to sign up for it, just find the link on our Facebook page. Sign up. I'll talk about baggage because sometimes the pattern is negative emotions, right? You're angry. You're pissed off. You're guilty about what happened before. You got to get rid of that baggage to break the pattern. For those of you who have done practitioner with me, sometimes the pattern is just a behavior. We'll, we'll do a swish pattern. Or maybe your state, your emotions are going down. Do an anchor. Those of you who did NLP, remember the anchoring? If you don't know what an anchor is, go on my YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and just type in Dr. Matt James. And one of the webinars on there is how do you do anchoring? It'll teach you how to do it. It's free. Learn how to control your state. Yeah, sometimes your pattern is your mind going down a negative path. And then you need to do some reframing. You got to switch your perspective on something. First though, you got to recognize the pattern. You have to recognize the pattern, celebrate that you found the pattern, and then ask yourself, what is it that will interrupt this pattern, that will break the pattern at the point where it goes wrong so that I can begin to create a new pattern, so that I can begin to create something new in my life? And that's what all of us have to do. I have to do it. You have to do it. If you're willing to take that step, and have the courage to do it. Because look, again, I'm going to point out facing yourself and realizing that these patterns that you're running are you and not anyone else. It takes courage. You got to be able to step up to that and be able to sit there and go, this is all about me. And then I now have the ability to see that this is something that I'm doing. How can I begin to gain a deeper level of control over it to begin to take back control of my life? You can't hack your mind unless you know what it is that you got to hack, right? You can't go in there and just think happy thoughts if that's not what the problem is. The webinars that I did last week were all on Ho'oponopono. Get my book because sometimes your patterns are about forgiveness. Whatever it is, you find that pattern, you break it, and you're free of it.